So I've been drawing figures digitally for the last few days and the process has been really different to how I thought it would be. When I'm drawing on paper, my drawings end up being almost in a different style to how they've ended up being when I'm drawing on the iPad. And if you draw figures digitally, then I've got a bunch of tips for you. And if you don't, I've got some arguments for why it could be worth giving it a go, right? A couple of tips straight off the bat. One is that when I'm drawing on paper, I'll use smooth newsprint and a charcoal pencil personally. I'll use an overhand grip. I'll make sure that my drawing surface is tilted up and then I'll use big motions of my arm. And so the big motions of my arm and the little bit of friction between the paper and the pencil and that responsiveness allows me to create certain types of big gestural marks. And try as I might, I really struggled, even though you can do really lovely things on, uh, on, the, on the iPad and you can create great lines and you can, one nice thing is you can, you know, do a line and then just take it back. So you can have like 10 goes at a line. I still found that it was really not a uh, good, this wasn't the right tool for me to do those gestural marks and the types of marks that I like to make on the iPad. And so I started to change how I drew. So I'm using Lane Brown's brush pack. Lane is really good at figure drawing on paper and digital. And so I checked out uh, how he does it. And one thing that he does is he'll, he won't do the overhand grip and big movements of your arm, which actually you can do on here, um, but he'll hold the pencil like more towards the base and then do marks this way. And so to create like big movements or big marks on the screen, one thing you can do is just zoom out on the drawing surface. And so that's really interesting, right? Because if you zoom out, a small movement of the pencil can create a large mark. Like if this was an A3 sheet, then to make a mark that big, you might be doing that. But on here, just doing this with it zoomed out creates a big mark. So zooming out is really, really beneficial thing. Zooming out is also really useful because as you draw, you can get a look at your drawing uh, like on a like a big picture view of it, right? Instead of getting lost in all the details, you can easily see a big picture view of it. All right, so let me bring up uh, one of the drawings that I did, which is this one. As I did this drawing, one thing that I did a lot was flip horizontally. It's one of the big advantages of drawing on, you know, digitally. <laughs> And uh, I've got to find a different way of saying that word. So um, we, one thing that I noticed as I was drawing these figures is you've got to use the advantages of digital drawing as much as you possibly can because there are disadvantages, right? One of the disadvantages, like I said, is that lack of the tactile response to the paper. Uh, it's more difficult to use these arm movements and the overhand grip and stuff like that. So because of that, I think it's really, really important to use the advantages of the digital side. And so some people feel like, oh, digital is cheating because it allows you to hit undo. But no, undo is one of the advantages of digital drawing. And then there are tons of advantages to drawing with a paper and pencil and using your finger and stuff like that. Another one is layers. You can add a layer. So this is something I did a lot. Like, let's say I'm, I wanna add to this drawing but I'm not exactly sure if what I'm, I wanna strengthen this shadow or something, I'm not exactly sure uh, if it's gonna be a good idea. So I'll do it and then I'll go, ooh, that doesn't look quite right, no problem. I just, whoops, I'll just get rid of that layer, right? I don't need that layer, I can hit undo. So you gotta use the advantages where you can get them. In terms of the process that uh, I ended up using, Normally I like to make my drawings about, really about the lines and the rhythm going across the figure in the lines. I ended up doing more tonal drawings on the iPad because that seemed to me that the material had strengths there, it had advantages there. And I actually find that when I'm using a charcoal pencil or newsprint, uh, 
it's a little clunky for creating subtle tonal variations, right? I end up like putting a little bit of the charcoal pencil and it suddenly gets like a really strong amount of, um, of charcoal on there and it gets really dark really fast. And then using like blending stumps, you can be a lot more subtle, but even with that, I find a blending stump and a, and a, um, a kneaded eraser or something, you can get subtle, but I find it hard to be really, really gentle with those materials. Maybe if I was using something like willow charcoal, uh, it would be easier to really sculpt with it and gently move it around. But I don't really love using willow charcoal. Right? I don't really enjoy it as much. I did, at least not now, I think in the future, and once I've figured it out more, maybe I'll get more into it. But I find it just lifts off the page so easily, it's kind of messy. Uh, and I don't really love the way it even applies on the paper as much as a pencil. Anyway, that's for another day. With the, I really enjoyed it with the iPad. The way that we, I could apply tones onto the paper really strongly, or really, really, really subtly and gently, almost imperceptible amounts of value. And then I could come up to the smudge tool and I could get like, because Lane in his brush pack has like a gentle soften and I can soften these marks so gently. And so the, one of the biggest things about digital figure drawing is how much control you have. And so you can create things that feel spontaneous. It's like, the, you know those people who uh, their haircut looks like it just, it looks kind of messy but you know it took them like 30 minutes to get it to look really cool while looking, while looking messy. It's kind of like that, like you can create marks that look kind of spontaneous, but they've been really gently adjusted and altered. The edges have been adjusted. You can zoom in and you can use very gentle, you know, smudging and smoothing tools. When you want to take some off, you want to take a little bit off, you can really, uh, modify, like you can adjust with very, very gentle, uh, you know, using the, the pencil, just having it skim across the surface of the iPad, you can modify very, very gently. And so you can push and pull and apply the charcoal with such a great amount of control. And so that's why I would end up making these kinds of more tonal drawings. So let me show you another one. So let me show you the process that I used for this drawing and here it is. So I started off with, if you've ever watched this channel, I talk a lot about starting with a big simple rib cage egg shape and then building up the hips and looking for asymmetries in the torso from one side to the other and then building up big simple shapes of value. And because these references, these are references that you can find uh, in for free, get the link down below. Um, they're lit from one side, well, they've got very distinct lighting with big clear shadow shapes. So it's relatively straightforward to separate the figure into big area of light, big areas of dark, right? So that's what I do next. And so all of this process uh, is just how I always like to draw figures a lot of the time. And now I'm starting to push and pull the values in the shadows and in the light with different tools. What I wanna talk about is the, the tools that you can use when you're drawing figures digitally. So one thing is to not draw, ideally I think, to not draw on a white background, right? Because when you, when you open up a, you know, a drawing canvas, it's often completely white. And so to pull that back and a textured background like this with the newsprint is nice for this kind of drawing. So there's a lot of brushes in Lane's brush pack, right? There's all kinds of brushes and it can feel, I think, overwhelming. And quite often when you open up any digital uh, drawing tool, there's tons of brushes. And if you buy a brush pack, there's like 50 brushes. People wanna give you their money's worth, right? And so you gotta, just like with a palette, you don't wanna have a painting palette. You don't need to have every color in the world. You limit your palette down and then learn how to use just a few of the tools. And so the tools that I think are worth using with figure drawing is one is like a main 
uh, and by the way, this applies to traditional too, is to have like a main sort of workhorse that's gonna do most of the work for you. I chose the smooth charcoal pencil, right? But there are other ones in there that you could choose and there would be perfectly good options like the general or something like that. What's going on here? Like the general pencil. And so you can play around with these. Uh, to be honest, I just, I just went with this one because I really liked how I could apply very subtle tones and then stronger ones, but you can actually do that with a lot of them. So, um, you know, if I choose the Elvgren, then yeah, that's a great choice too. And when you're, if you're working traditionally, you can have a main workhorse pencil, which for me is a pit pastel or a general's charcoal. So then I need a tool for erasing. And so I chose the kneaded eraser because it kind of allowed me to, let's say I put down some value here. I could, you know, remove it. <laughs> I don't want to erase. One thing I don't want to do is erase with something that's really hard because suddenly this does not have the same feel as the materials that I'm using. It's way too harsh. So if I use the uh, eraser that comes with um, the brush pack, which is designed to work with these brushes, then you see how it kind of fits with the materials much better. And one thing you can do actually is just use the same. Like I can get, I can go to the erase uh, function or whatever, choose the smooth charcoal pencil and erase with the same pencil that I've applied it with and naturally it's gonna kind of make sense, right? With the uh, marks that I'm applying. So you can do that too. You can use the same pencil, but in erase mode. I wanted a, ma a material that I could smudge with, right? And so again, one thing I could do is just kind of smudge with the same, with the smooth pencil, but I chose things like the Yan towel wipe, and I chose this for bigger smudges, right? So this is allowing for big, like quite often when I'm drawing, I build up the values, I get too deep, I overcomplicate them, and then I just need to simplify them all back and almost like start again. And so when I'm trying to just flatten the values out in a big area and, and start again, I'll use this big smudging tool. And then I wanted to use a very gentle smudging tool right, just to refine edges, where I wanted the edges to be softer. And then one thing that you can also add, uh, you could add, I actually really enjoyed this tool, which is the dirty finger, which is the equivalent of having like, uh, yeah, like a bunch of charcoal on your finger and just, because I, I do that a lot, I just use a dirty finger when I'm drawing. So I use the dirty finger to add a bit of tone onto the paper um, in addition to the main pencil. When I just want to add a little bit here and there to, you know, bring out a little bit of different texture and, and do, apply it quite gently. But other things that, you know, we could do, we could have something that um, is gonna apply value to a large area. And so, you know, you can experiment with the other various tools that are in there, which allow for that, right? So like a dust sweep, which is gonna allow you to kind of, it's almost like you've got, uh, I guess, you know, charcoal dust that you wanna apply some atmosphere in the background with or something like that. And so one thing that was really cool about this is that uh, these are kind of tonal drawings and if I was gonna build these up on, on newsprint, it might take me like 30 minutes or 40 minutes or, 40, or even longer. But these only took like, I can't remember, maybe like 15 or 15 or 20 minutes or something. Uh, and, even, and that's even with me just figuring out the tools. So this brings me to one of the main points that I wanna make about all of this, is that this feels very much like a playground where you can just safely try all kinds of things with a lot of control. And so even if you, and you ultimately just want to draw on paper, it can be a really good thing to get into for just learning and testing and exploring different principles. You can also just be like, hmm, I wonder if 
you know, uh, the this whole shoulder should drop a bit and you can just grab it and drop it down and just think, does that work better? Maybe it doesn't, you know? Another thing you can do um, is you can check things on the actual reference and you can just see, you know, how they align. So for example, if I wanted to drop a vertical here, I could see how the butt lines up with that and then go, hmm, I have pushed it across maybe a little bit too far, but then you think, so then I could go, okay, I've pushed it across a bit too far. Shall I push it back again? So what I can do is I could make, I could duplicate it. So I've got it, uh, a, a copy of it. And then I can use the liquify tool to just push everything in the butt across something like this, push it all across. And then I can be like, okay, so which one do I like more? Do I like this one or do I like this one? Right. And I may, I may like the more exaggerated version. I may like the dial down version. And so you can explore and explore and explore. And I did this with landscape painting because I was really struggling with the paint. I was trying to use gouache paint and just understanding the paint itself and getting good with that was taking ages and I wasn't able to learn about values and uh, saturation and stuff like that, the actual principles of painting. So I started to use the iPad where I could control all of that much more closely, right? I could come up here and I could get vary the values, I could vary the saturation, you know, I could vary the, the uh, color temperature or whatever. And that process really helped me to learn, even though I wanted eventually to be painting traditionally. So if you decide, if you only draw digitally, I would really recommend trying traditional paint, uh, traditional drawing, because it has these massive, massive advantages that you may not be enjoying while by just drawing digitally. And you may be able to create lines and things that you can't on the digital. Well, maybe that you can, but that are easier to do traditionally. And also there's a sort of character to traditional drawings, which I think, um, you know, digital can kind of emulate, but can't, doesn't exactly match. On the other hand, if you only draw on paper, try the digital, it's a great way to learn. And you may actually start to draw differently because of the wonderful advantages of digital drawing. I think I've learned how to say digital again. Now here's a really, really important note. Sometimes you can be doing drawings or doing paintings, they're not working out, and you think, ah, it must be easier with a different material, right? If you're struggling to draw on, on paper, it is not magically gonna fix that by jumping into an iPad and vice versa, right? What really matters, what's gonna make all the difference with your figure drawings is not how you apply the marks on the on the surface, it's how well you can see things. So it's how well you can simplify the forms that you're looking at, simplify the values that you're looking at, check the alignments, what lines up vertically, what lines up horizontally, how well you can check angles, proportions, and things like that. All of these underlying foundational and fundamental principles aren't dependent on the material that you're using. Some materials allow you to practice those things more easily, but that doesn't mean that they give you the skill. They just allow you to practice. So if you're trying to learn those things, jumping into them with a br ink brush pen, that would be very challenging, I think. And so if you're using digital, that's gonna be a good tool. If you're using charcoal pencil and newsprint, that's gonna be a good tool. And there are lots of other combinations that are gonna be good. But Ultimately, what really matters is, yeah, what's gonna make all the difference is learning these foundational or fundamental principles and, and, and just learning those skills. And you've gotta give yourself time to do that. All right, if you are interested in uh, buying Lane's brush pack, I would recommend buying it. There's a link below. Lane is a super nice guy. I've been chatting to him uh, a fair bit recently. And he's a super nice guy and he's always supported us. So go and support him and get his brush pack. Um, we are actually gonna have a workshop with Lane in our study group. 
where we are going to uh, look at his process for creating figure drawings and some exercises that he recommends for learning to draw figures in the way that he does. So it's really, really exciting. And if you want to join us on that, um, and we're also gonna do a live session feeding back on people's drawings as well. If you wanna join us on that, check join our study group. And the link to learn more about that is below. And in the meantime, there is a uh, video up on the screen. Check it out and I'll see you over there.